Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. I'm James. I'm Ralph. And today we are back talking about The Mandalorian. It's season three, chapter 17 of the show in total, because that's how they number these things. Uh, it's mm. The Apostate. The title of the episode was The Apostate. Uh, right. It has been a while. We have, on this show, have never talked about an, an episode of Mandalorian. We've, we no. did the, like our recaps of season one, our recaps of season two, but this weirdly <laughs> is our first episode of the Mandalorian. Just kind of a reason why we did just recaps of full seasons. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think people, I think we mentioned on there that um, when we did those recaps, I did not do a rewatch. Mm. And then this, before season three i did not do a rewatch <laughs> i i i thought about it i watched so i watched the two mando episodes of the book of boba fett um i i didn't watch any old mando uh, i've seen them all yeah. two three times each uh, and i didn't watch the finale of uh book of boba fett but i did like the two mando focused episodes the ones with luke and stuff like that um, i mean you're not really yeah you're not really there's not a whole lot of information to forget about Exactly. It's uh, yeah. and it's it's the benefit and the the I don't even want to say problem. It's the pro and the con of the Mandalorian. The show is mm -hmm. it's like in comparison to something like Andor, it's relatively slight. You don't need to worry about too much other stuff going on. Like in the last couple of weeks, I've seen a lot of podcasts and a lot of sites doing like, yeah, here's all the episodes of the Clone Wars and Rebels that you need to watch before you watch this show. It's like you don't like watch them cool they're all really good they're all really mm -hmm. fun and you'll have a really good time and you might come into it and you'll see some stuff and go ah that but if you need to know it for the story of the mandalorian they're gonna tell you this show is made with the broadest audience in mind possible mm -hmm. and is... when i when when we did this show i didn't want to cover the animated series because there's just too much there exactly i it's... watched i watched it once i got the gist of it and there might be stuff in mandalorian where i'm just like okay like I understand yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of fully, you know, the dark saber and Mandalore mm -hmm. and that stuff and anything that I don't remember from this series, they brought it up in season one and two of Mandalorian. Yeah. I'm and they'll, if it's, up. and if it's relevant, they'll bring it up again in this, like the, the name drop of uh, Sindari, the city of Sindari, like, like that was <laughs> that's the like the capital city on Mandalore. Um, okay. uh, Bo-Katan mentions it at the end of this episode. It's like, you don't need to know the, the history of it or the politics of it or that her sister right. ran it as a pacifist, like, and all of that. You don't need to know that stuff. It's it's not relevant for this story. What is relevant is that Mandalore's all fucked up at the moment. It's it's the same. It's the same as Obi Wan's talking about the Clone Wars and Star yeah. Wars. It's like I get it from context clues. Mm -hmm. It was a thing. But you don't need to know the history of uh, Quinlan Vos yeah. to to know that like. He saw a name on a wall and he recognized that name. Like that's, that's when I was sort like, of when I was like 17, 18, 19, I knew everything there was to know about Star Wars. Yeah. Because I was basing it on three movies, two Ewok shows, and like, you know, it was real easy. Uh -huh. uh, and now with like, what is it, seven, eight seasons of Clone Wars? Uh, uh, seven, Rebels. seven seasons of Clone Wars, four seasons of Rebels. And there's Mando stuff in Rebels. Yeah, and it's like good, really like, good Mando cow. stuff. Yeah, and and it's like okay, like I remember my broad history lessons when I was in high school. Uh, same goes for like these all the Clone Wars stuff. I mean, that's all the Rebel stuff. Essentially, what those shows are, they are like history yeah. lessons of. I mean, the way that they're sort of presented yeah. a lot of the time. Um, yeah. That's that's sort of a, a basic like here's where we are at the start of this show the start of season three of the mandalorian um favreau made some comments a couple of days ago that sort of seemed to set the internet on like mini fire uh saying that it's been like two years or something like since these two have been together and people are like oh my god was grogu training with luke for two years um mm -hmm. he has since clarified i saw this morning uh he's clarified uh, i think it was someone from vanity fair asked him directly it's like you, you, you made some comments and set the internet on fire and he was basically his character from Chef where he's like, oh, oh shit, did I? What did I say? Um, and But I and, mean, look at Navarro. And, but that's well, it. Like, you, you look at Navarro, yeah. every time we've been back, it's been improved and improved and improved. Um, and I think basically what he's clarified is like, 
the time frames have been the same as when we've been away. So Luke was training Grogu for what was it, six months between six, eight months between season two and the start of Book of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't a full year, I don't think. Um, or if it, it might, maybe it was. So maybe he was training for a year. Uh, Mando was missing him, so we went and picked him up. Um, mm-hmm. Then between Book of Boba Fett and now, we've had another year and change. So yeah, that tracks that they've just been doing stuff yeah. he's been trying to find and then what's really the there's no what i don't understand what the hubbub is about like what's the problem with it being two years no i, I don't is it that where it, is it fomo or is that they were missing think, stuff yeah maybe people were just going oh what what happened then it's like stuff you know you don't need to yeah. know about the the bounty hunter and all the probably, hotel if, probably yeah, nothing so, yeah a, a whole lot of nothing nothing of galaxy. interest so we'll pick up the story of once interesting stuff starts happening mm-hmm. again. Uh, like we get the the um, the sort of crystal with the uh, Mandalore writing on it. Like yep. that's new, right? Yeah, Is yeah, we new? didn't see that because I was I was thinking so, that as well because he mentioned that he got like, it from Jawas, who got it from someone who claimed to be. But it's like we know that he's well, now had a lot of dealings with Jawas between like the stuff in yeah. season one, the stuff with Pelly. Like he, yeah. so he's so it's got quite good relations. So essentially, for the last two years, it's been kind of boring. Nothing been going on. But then he just found this thing. I was like, "Huh, mm. I better go talk to the armor about this." And we're like, "And Favreau's like, cool, something fun to shoot. Let's get back into the story." It's like, and that, uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that's that's where the episode kicks off. It's like we don't get the the Star Wars title music, like with the title cards with the helmets. We're just getting yeah. sounds, and like we pick up that it's. <laughs> It's it's she's making a helmet, which is cool. We've seen her make some bits and bobs, but now she's crafting a full helmet. Um, at first, I thought, is this a flashback? Is that is that going to be like young Din getting his first helmet or something? But right. it's not. Um, it's it's another kid being indoctrinated into a cult. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I am I I don't have good feelings about the armor at all anymore. Like she's a cool character, mm-hmm. she's interesting, but she is the bad guy in the show. If you ask me, like she is, yeah. she's a cult leader. She is, she is bad. Yeah. I um, agree. and I like, agree. We, we see that. I mean, the- I don't know. Like the whole thing, it feels very like you and I have similar views on organized religion and it feels like, you know, it's like a baptism and that's exactly what this is. Like the putting oh, yeah. on the helmet, it is a baptism. They're doing it in a lake. Like the imagery is there. What was it's... she going to do with the bowl of water? <laughs> pour, pour, pour it on pour the helmet? I, I don't know. Um, Cause I was like, Oh, is he going to, is this a, like, is he going to have to like drink this? And it's a test if he takes his helmet off. <laughs> Yeah, how thirsty of you? We've been dehydrating you for the last week. <laughs> let's um, let's say hey to some folks. Yeah, we got uh, some people here. Jeremy's here. Sarah's here. Rick, uh, Stevie's here. Um, she had a, a a fun little review after we were done. Ooh. Um, Scott D is here. Lucha Johnny, Fets. He sent me a text uh, mentioning uh, Scud the. the the disposable assassin. Excellent. Um, and Great call. Also, right? StreamYard. Thank you, StreamYard. Thanks for always, being here. Always appreciate it. Keep on you. improving. Yes, and you are. <laughs> we like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, the helmet, like, it's it was a big deal because it, it's the sounds we hear as we get the Star Wars logo. Like, this is, we're getting introduced to this thing and she's mm-hmm. making the helmet and stuff and it's, you know, best car armor and stuff. But then when she has it and she's holding it, and I don't know if it's because of the size or the paint job, but it looks like a toy. Spirit Halloween. Yeah. Like, like kids, kids thing. And I, it, I think it's the paint job, maybe. I, I think I it's a know. mix of, and like, it, but the, then the, but the, the visor is like, wide. like a big wide. And yeah, it um, looks, it looks like one of the cheap toy Boba Fett helmets that you can buy, like, as opposed to that, right. like you can actually see out of which, as opposed to one of the ones that are costumes, which we know from the actors giving interviews, yeah. they're like, oh, you can't see shit. Like you put this on, you, we can't see anything out of these things. Like, then, they're almost impossible to even, see it. Even though it even though it locks into place, that yeah. sound yeah. I want to oh, know what that is. Yeah, what's it? Is it suction around the neck? Maybe like. Well, his hair's sticking out. Yeah, uh, yeah. But maybe I'm thinking maybe you don't want it to fall off. But maybe no. there's like a headset like yours inside, and mm-hmm. it maybe cups the ears and holds and yeah. holds the helmet into place because there's no chin strap. No. So I'm thinking maybe I'm thinking the ears 
kind of go and like close into kind of yeah yeah um and when like because that's the thing i was thinking about it as well when we see the kids like scrambling up the side of the 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 cliff a little bit later on in the scene like there's no shake there's no wobble on those helmets at all like they are definitely like they're in there they're they're formed like the they're like i don't know yeah it's like like a a memory foam type thing rebox pump yeah <laughs> yeah that's it or like yeah. the sleeves like the sleeves in uh back to the future 2 mm-hmm. mm-hmm. like, or the the, the laces on back to the future 2 like everything about it yeah 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 um so that's fine but i mean cool the kids noise. helmets i think the killed kids helmets all had crazy paint colors uh kids. i think like the adult the, all, the adult helmets look fine they, they all so look fine just... but i like the variety we saw some of the variety in season one but as we go through like we're getting more and more uh, I'm sure the Styles Explained have done like a video, like breaking down all the different clans that we see and stuff in there. Like, right. I I didn't make any out. Obviously, we see um, Favreau's character as well. He's still kicking it with the armorer. Uh, they're the only two that I recognize as people that we've seen before. But maybe maybe there's some of the ones from the the culvert. They're definitely like rebuilding their forces. Like they at the mm-hmm. in when in Book of Boba Fett, she said like we're a clan of three, and it's like. All right, they're they're a lot more than that now. They've got more foundlings. Like, there's more than mm-hmm. one kid there now. Um, yeah, the the whole foundling thing though, it's it's it's. I, I don't like it. I just don't like indoctrinating kids. Like, if they want to join later yeah. on, fine, whatever. But indoctrinating kids just feels icky to me. Um, yeah. But it's interrupted. It is interrupted, uh, and we get our first big monster of the season. Um, the show, the show's done a lot of these at this point, uh, a few of these at this point, uh, and they've always been fun. Um, this one was what was it? They it was do like one, a... yeah, they do it in the first episode of each season. So, oh, it's yeah, the big monster. They had the the walrus guy, the um, the crate dragon, and now the and in book Lake Boba Placid. Fett, we had the the four armed um, Harryhausen looking bad guy. Yeah, well. I think that was episode two. two, but I mean episode one had Sarlacc. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, that point. counts too. Yeah, but it um, I think that was episode two. I thought episode two sure. was the train heist. I think. What's what's the sands of Tatooine? Sands of Tatooine. I don't. Know. Adam. Early, Adam. Early will know. in the season. Yeah, um, Adam will know. But but yeah, I just recently sent that that uh, clip of that monster to Jorge because it's like totally Harryhausen. Like that. Oh yeah. That I love that one. Um, this design looked like a straight up crocodile or alligator it's a, it's, yeah it's a, a crocodile with like an armadillo back uh which reminded me of yeah. avatar the last airbender because there's like the, in that show there's always like hybrid animals and one of the ones that's mentioned i don't think we ever see it is a, a crocodilo and so i've just been referring to this thing oh as a crocodilo. could that be a felony thing oh like it could a be. Nod? yeah maybe he maybe. worked on that right yeah the first season of that um that's where yeah. george found him was off of that i think um yeah so it could be it could be a crocodilo um but it was it was cool. It was definitely way more like Earth-like, if that makes sense. Like it was just straight up like crocodile yeah. alligator. Like even down to like the death roll that it does. Like it's yeah. it's straight up that. It also it... reminded me a lot of the um the Watcher in the Water from Fellowship of the Ring. Uh as they're going into the mines of Moria and it's just attacking them. Um and okay. I think that that is because this felt like a static boss to me you know like in old video games you get to it and like there's a big yeah. boss at the edge of the screen that will do its moves and it will come in <laughs> come up this over felt, the hill but it won't move in it won't do anything else it'll stay exactly where it is and then you just have to sort of duck in and out to which it. i don't know why they all didn't just kind of head to the hills and just leave it be yeah like, he's he's not bothered like just leave him yeah um yeah. he's just pissed off that you're doing mando jesus stuff in his lake um <laughs> right no like, shit in my lake yeah. <laughs> that's what he's doing um yeah but yeah like it's yeah stevie says the same thing doesn't seem necessary to kill a wild animal um i don't know um but but it's cool to have a spaceship come in and shoot an and- animal I mean, and that's the reveal of when we know that it's not a flashback because Din comes in, shoots the thing, yeah. saves the day. And then he does his cool guy, like almost like his cool guy nod to them as he pulls up and pulls back the hood. Um, yeah. And then we get the crew, cute little Grogu popping up and just be like, hey, hey. Um, which is, you know, it's, it's, that's the, that's the cheer moment, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, Scott mentioned that. What if the helmets didn't fit? I thought the same thing. I'm like, that kid has a lot of hair. Yeah. What if Shave it just? It. Yeah, but you can't take it off. It's too late. Cut it, bowl cut, Mando bowl cut. I mean, do they? Do they? Think, I mean, they are they get, allowed they take to it take off in, it off in, in private. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I don't know. It's so weird. I just, so... I guess they, I guess they do their own grooming. They must. Like, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not a big fan of like. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Yeah. Um, this is our first time covering this show. Um, after an episode, mm-hmm. uh, we did it one more time, uh, back on my Patreon days before this show existed. Yep. Our first podcast together. Um, and it's the show <laughs> like, I feel like you've soured I, on it more as time's gone on. I mean, there's, I, I, I want to say like episode five of season one. Oh, really? Um, there's an episode with me and Alex Stewart from the Smuggler's Dispatch and the Backside of Water. Yeah. And he's like talking me down oh, wow. off of the ledge. Um, and it's one of those things where I'm just like, I'm lukewarm on the show. Mm. I feel like this is what I feel like. I feel like Bo Katan. I'm sitting here watching this shit go down <laughs> and. Uh, there's definitely a more hardcore sect of Mandos out there who are like way into the show. And I'm like, just kicking back. Like, I mean, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah. like that. I, I, there's, there's diehards out there. And, and then there's like me. And I think one of the things that uh, watching this episode, which was fine for me, um, became less fine for me after our last Disney Plus series, yeah. and that's that's t- it's no fault of Mandalorian. No, I I it's just I've Andor tried, was so good. I've tried to separate it into a completely different like mindset. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Um, th- there was stuff I liked in the episode. Um, and again, this is episode one of a season so it's set up yeah it's completely set up which is fine um you have to have it mm-hmm. you have to have it you have to remind people where we're at and you have to uh, let people know where we're going mm-hmm. for this for this chunk of stuff to the point where like Boca Tan says you still have the black saber uh, uh yeah. just wave it around in front of them and they'll follow you <laughs> and it's like okay it's like the quickest like George Lucasy, faster, more intense way of sort of recapping without having to be a whole ordeal. Like but, this character who's kind of done with Mandalore yeah. and the Mandalorian, his cult, um, uh, is just like, okay, we're just gonna we need to remind people that this dark saber because he doesn't use it in this. He used it in Book of Boba Fett, but who knows? Average Joe might have not watched Book of Boba Fett because they're just fans of the show called The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. Yeah. I mean, Luke isn't even brought up. No. Um, the the, I was the armor that there was versus no... the lightsaber wasn't brought up. There was no recap. I still just... think I was shocked that they didn't do a recap just showing like uh Grogu and Mandu like reconnecting. Like I was shocked. I skipped there was a op- there was a recap that I skipped. Something there was a recap going on. Yeah, it, the recap showed a little bit of IG-11, um, and it showed the him meeting Bo-Katan, and it showed him being called an apostate. That was that was it, basically. It was like okay. stuff that was relevant oh, for even, this episode. I don't even remember him being called that, so... All right, yeah. They, they um, reminded me. I was like, oh, okay. Um, but the thing is, I still believe that Grogu has the lightsaber. I still believe it was a test. Mm-hmm. Like Luke's Luke gave him a, a thing, uh, uh Sith's deal in absolutes, it's either one or the other. Mm. And Luke presented Grogu with this it's the, either you're a Mandalorian or you're a Jedi, you can't be both. And that lightsaber is pretty small, <laughs> he could and he, he could be, and he does he, like to steal things when people aren't looking, but Din might have it, yeah. Din might yeah. have it in a pouch, and it could be revealed later. I still believe, because I feel like Luke Skywalker is the type of Jedi to be like, you know, the Jedi didn't do it right. We, he, we know the he's Sith late, didn't though. do it right. 
We know he is late, but, so I don't think he is at this point. You don't think by the time of Book of Boba Fett, he's not, he hasn't spent the last, what is it, at least five years reading the ancient texts? I don't know if like, he has, oh. he might not have them yet. We don't, we don't know. Like, but I, I feel still like believe... he doesn't get them until after, like, Ben burns down the school and but he burns Also, he, the like, thing, he goes to Acto. The thing is, Luke wasn't a Jedi when Obi Wan handed him his lightsaber. No, you can have a lightsaber and not be a Jedi. Like, yeah. yeah. So I feel like, I feel like, I feel like he's got both. I have a. Uh, this is my prediction. This season, we will see the reveal that Grogu has Grogu's both. lightsaber. I'd like to see it. I think that'd be really yeah. good. Um, like, yeah, he he saves the day, but not in his normal like force push way. Like he'll do it with a lightsaber. Um, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, there's some really good yeah, comments but, here. Uh, Fetz, Fetz, has Fetz really, mentions really that the Mandalorian is a delicious Happy Meal and or is a twenty dollar restaurant burger. Agree. I like both. That's yeah, that's like perfect. Both. And there is a time and um, a place for both. Sometimes you want one, sometimes you want the other. Um yeah. there's nothing wrong with either. They are just different. No. They're just very, very different. They're like, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to talk more about Bo Katan in a bit, but yeah, this episode it just gave me that feeling of it. This is Mando as he's leaving college. Like he's going and catching up with his old <laughs> friends, he's making his travel plans. He doesn't really know what he's doing at the moment. He's trying to figure himself out. He's going to put on his traveling pants and go to Thailand for a month. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's sort of what I thought he's doing at this point in time. Um, he's catching up with everyone else. <laughs> Nick Dillinger says, spinning lightsaber, Grogu, are we riot? I mean, I want to see it. He likes to do flips and stuff. Yeah. Like, he's he's got those Yoda moves. He's really um, getting in tune with the Force as far as, like, just, like, putting it out there. And, like, and like taking the taking the skittle and spinning around in a chair using the force and stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. but I think like showing that doesn't skittle care. Thing, no, and and grief doesn't really care either. Like he seems yeah. like he's. I mean, he's done it to grief, so he's he's fine with it. But I think showing that skittle is important. It's not just a cute moment because we've seen him like taking the pack of biscuits before, and then Luke yeah. obviously was training him, and it was precision, and it's how to be better. And I think this shows like he's got growth. He can be precise. He can get that one particular skitter without having to like make a mess of the bowl. Oh, so I right. think if he tried that in season two or something, like he would have pulled it and the bowl would have spilled everywhere and then he would have just gone boop and got the one. We, yeah, we talked a little bit about that with Pete, the retailer and Riley Silverman on our Rise of Skywalker episode, how mm -hmm. Ray, um, the big thing of her moving the big boulders in uh, the, the Last Jedi is really cool. Yep. But then seeing her sort of focus her force in the rise of skywalker by moving sand to yeah. pull to pull the lightsabers down yeah uh, i like that i like that it's force focused i didn't even think about that it doesn't need to get bigger every time sometimes getting smaller is more impressive like yeah. being able it's precision um yeah in in the same way that like you know mando can do some basic electronics but you need like a whole group of anzellans to be able to really get in there and tinker with your robot yeah um so it's a similar sort of thing uh yeah so yeah after after checking in with the armor and stuff he's he's just like yeah cool all right well he's i like how much he's standing up to the armor because the armor is like nope you're yeah. not amanda you can't you can't be redeemed that it's all doomed nope you're fucked leave and he's like no 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 no. i read your bible there is redemption yeah. and what if because this and he's presenting ideas yeah he's desperate he shouldn't be desperate leave 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 him alone they shouldn't be he shouldn't be there but it's it's almost like he's trying to recondition the then, armor in her version, whereas mm -hmm. Bo-Katan, he's like, I, I can't, I can't sway you. There's nothing I can do to sway you. Like, but I think he's, it's maybe he's dealing with he's someone like, stuck in the old ways and someone who's just lost complete. Yeah, like Bo-Katan's given up. Like, but I think he's like, yeah, Bo-Katan's ways aren't bad. Whereas I think he sees maybe he's starting to see the cracks in the armor and the the way the. The, the way um yeah i don't know just seeing that and knowing that like the this is the way is like such a the the catch-all phrase that people use for the show every time i'm seeing it i'm like oh no no it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's uh not my way hashtag not my yeah. way <laughs> yeah i i'm not you know me and mm -hmm. all, the, all the that's why i bring it up yeah any any sort of catch-all phrase like that um <laughs> 
but yeah, so he's on Navarro. He's he's checking in with grief. Uh, Navarro looks great. Looks really nice. Um, yeah. Uh, it's 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 up together. Everyone's having a good time. We got some of the choppy got chef some, droids. Got some greenery. Some greenery. Even as we're coming in, like it looks more vibrant and it's spreading. You can tell that it's like it's a, it's a boom period. And he even says like we're having a boom period right now. Like it's it's growing. Everything about it is growing. Um. And it sounds like they're able to do it independently of any sort of. Yeah, they they are acknowledged. They're acknowledged by the the Re- New Republic. They are on the like the hyperspace line and everything like that. But they are operating independently, um, and they're being allowed to, which is nice. Yeah. So obviously, of... it's it's got a history. So there's going to be some trouble every now and then. Speaking of the New Republic, yep, Cara Dune is out there. She has uh, joined up with. Uh, Special his character's name, yeah. yeah. So the ranger, the ranger storyline still exists. She can be out there. Um, I can Special forces get killed in battle all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna pull one out. <laughs> I mean, but it does leave it open for like the ranger stories and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Characters can still exist. Exactly. Fine. I'd be fine with a recast. Um, absolutely fine with a recast. The character was fine, but I think we're good without the character okay. or the like in Mando. But if you go and do a, a comic or something or a book, yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Um, I don't think you need to kill off kill off characters um, nah, because of uh, real life stuff. No, but write them out, and that's fine. And they they did that in an efficient, yeah. tidy, quick. It wasn't ignored. I think it's good that it wasn't ignored. Um, and and then, yeah, she's she's done. We need a... And what's... A the, I mean, and the thing is, with it, like, we know all the behind-the-scenes garbage. But, I mean, with the story, where we left in Mando Season 2, she was trying to get recruited. Like, it's part of the story. Well, they were trying to recruit so, her, yeah. Yeah, and so... Yeah. 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 So, it makes cool. sense. It Whatever. all fits. It... it they are able to do it. And also having a bit of a time gap in between means that, you know, yeah, these things have happened. She maybe came back, said goodbye, and then left again. Like, fine. That's all good. Um, yeah. And because of that, there is a, a bit of a void and pirates are starting to come back. And yeah, that, that dude did want to go and drink in a school. Um, which, again, we saw it in season two when we saw that school. We're like, ah, that's that's the bar from the first season. So we know that that's the case in the same way that like we saw the IG 11 statue in season two in the background. Now mm. it's become a plot point. Um, yeah. And they use parts of it. They use parts of IG 11. Yeah. So I, I thought that was cool. They, they, what they could recover, they've just built up around him. And so that when you pull it down, you're left with just like the framework of it. And it's, it's a funny little visual. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the the Nikto and there was a Nikto a Trandoshan, uh there was a Quarren in there. There's a bunch of, you know, all the typical pirate bad guy species that we've seen working yeah. for Jabber and for pirates. I'm like, other shows are doing a good job, books are doing a good job of like me like showing that like, you know, not all Trandoshans are Wookiee slavers, but this show's gonna lean into what you recognize them for. That's what Mando does. Um yeah. and all Anzelians apparently are droid yeah. fixers. Yep. Um, I mean, I mean, one of them I, could have I, been Babu the, Frick. We don't know. Might might one have uh, been Babu Frick. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We know why they're in there. Yeah. It, it, whatever your thoughts are on Rise of Skywalker, everybody loves Babu Frick. Yeah, everyone, everyone, including me. And I don't. I'm not. I don't get. I don't get tied up in the in the cute and the group like, love for things. No. But uh, I mean, it's undeniable. He's so I understand why they put it in here, and I'm like, oh boy. Um, and you have Grogu hugging the little guy, and then, was he trying to okay. eat? Him? I he mean, he's probably trying to eat him. Um, he's not a pet. But uh, as as much as I'm like, jeez, Louise, guys, here we go. Yeah. Got to show the 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 cutest thing. I'm surprised there isn't a BB8 a, a BB8 in there to. We got two cute, cute little droids. We did get two cute little yeah. droids. The cape droids. But but I gotta tell you, I love that set. Yes. That That's... set was rad. And seeing that <laughs> it like... looked it looked like an episode one model. Yeah. That they just found got out of storage. Because it had a big hanger door. Uh-huh. With but with grief 
but sort like, of kneeling see, down and looking you see in it it's from so good the outside you see like they've got a window they've got their door and then they've got essentially a garage door yeah. as you said like it's because they are a workshop so it's gonna be a bit bigger mando clearly had crawled into that and then he's just sat yeah. in there we've seen him sitting in the sand crawler before we know that he can sit in tight places and talk to small like like smaller than human size like creatures and stuff it's great and it just it it could if i think if grief had had one more pop in he's saying this he's saying this i think one more and i'd have been done with the joke but they sort of just hit it just cool. just just right i think um i love the way it looked because it looked just like an episode one model yeah like yeah. it had that that ilm feeling mm-hmm. that miniatures uh, of, like of looking this into, would a, shot. into a yeah. miniature model that they use for green screen background uh-huh. um and so I was like, oh, that's great. And then just yeah. seeing him sitting there cross-legged in the in the thing. You know what it's fun. the sort of thing that they could do is they could have an Anzellan like garage at Galaxy's Edge where all you can do is oh, you can just in look through, in it. You can look in through a window and it's just under one of the buildings, like and it, under one of the things. Um oh, man. and it's it's just there. Like and it's it's lit so you can sort of it's gonna catch your eye or something, or maybe a sign. There's but. So at Disneyland, since at least the 60s, um, there is a little tiny house in Adventureland. Have you seen this? I mean, I haven't been to Disneyland since 2000. Oh, yeah. But have you have you heard of it? So no. there was a little golden book called, um, called, it was something about the little man at Disneyland. And the story goes, if I remember correctly, there was a little tiny leprechaun kind of guy that lived in the orange groves in a tree where Disneyland was being built. Okay. And he was the one that allowed them to build kind of on his land. Yeah. And the thing is, if you know where to look Mm. that the the little house from some golden book from like the fifties or sixties. Yeah. Jeremy Kelly, the little man at Disneyland. Um, uh, I'll look it up. And mm-hmm. uh, but if they can do that in Galaxy's Edge, I feel like it would be real easy to do. Yeah, it's the sort of thing you be real uh, easy to do. Hell, you could probably even do it as like a, a, a visual effect where you don't need to actually build it out as a cool, cool little miniatures thing, like just do it with a trick of the eye. Like it's it'd be cool. Um, it as they were walking through like this new built up Navarro, it did make me think. I'm kind of shocked that this isn't Black Spire Outpost or that we've not seen Black Spire Outpost on screen yet. Um, we've been told about it in Solo. It's been mentioned. I think it's been mentioned a few times. Um, but, like, I, I, it's, it's got to be a matter of time, right? Like, at some point, they're going to show it, um, whether or not they sort of shoot there or like, set dress it or do something or just make it look like that. Um, yeah, I, I'd be shocked if we don't see it at some point. Yeah, uh, Jeremy Kelly's given everyone. It's it's by the NDQ apparently. Um, it is by the NDQ, and yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop this open right now um, and present this. I'll share screen. I will do this. So here's the little golden book, uh, the Little Man in Disneyland, and here is a page from the book. Okay, the little tiny house, uh-huh. and here is the actual. Oh wow little actual his, thing his so if house. you if you if you go to disneyland and you look at the there's there's a there's a, a imitation tree mm-hmm, that has yeah. the indiana jones attraction sign okay if it's you on that go side. and look at the base of that tree and kind of look around you can see that little tiny door that's great i love that that's the sort yeah. of attention to detail that it's it's nice it's, that they do not, and i only learned replicate. about it a couple years ago yeah um but if it i mean i feel like just find a back wall take out a portion slide easy. in a model easy in the in the in the in the sort of garage door hangar door put that thick glass and then you could just look in there rick, rick put mentions a, put, put a it under, little... under the droid depot perfect idea like yeah 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 so i like it i think um i think it'll be uh i think it is a project that would probably cost around let's say 50 grand tops yeah and you would get so many in uh instagram people posting photo pictures. ops it's exactly that yeah 
just have it show up one day. Mm-hmm. Don't tell yeah. anybody about it. Put a little couple of, just put a little Babu Frick guy and the hey. going like this. Or you just every night, like like Disney love to do, like smells and sounds and stuff. Just have a, like a sound coming from a corner, like every five ten minutes, just be hey hey or something like, yeah, yeah something like that, and just to catch people's attention, maybe. Perfect. Let's make it um, let's do it. Um, so on Navarro, Din says that he needs IG eleven back. Uh, what a change from when he first met him. Do we know why he needs him back? I guess it's because. If Mandalore is poisoned, having a droid that can walk around under poison okay. conditions, uh, or, you know, he was a really good caretaker. So if Din needs to go and do something, having someone right. else to look after Grogu makes sense. Um, I don't know where mm. he thinks he's going to put him in the N1. That's um, what I'm wondering now. <laughs> here's some things like, I, I mean, d- I was like, don't give him the long legs, and you could probably stick him in storage. Yeah. Can you give him little little treadwell legs? Something like you could Arc he doesn't legs? need to be all gangly IG droid anymore. Like he can be an amalgam well, of all sorts. The way they made it sound is like, well, I mean, he did have the body, but they but they they kept mentioning the memory banks, the memory yeah. system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Basically, can, we hard see IG, can we see IG eleven? his memory and his demeanor and his uh, sort of um, uh, penchant for to blow things up <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in a non-threatening style smaller droid like Maybe. a uh, like a BD mm-hmm. I think a BD uh, which we saw Peli has a BD right is that the that's the one from the Jedi game Jedi? yeah yeah the, the, the yeah BD BD one is in the game so yeah he, she's got a BD droid put him Put him in one of those. Put his memory in one be... of those. Have him I mean, walk around on his shoulder. All, I mean, I, I'd be okay with exploring a poison planet, but I don't know how much of a, a good um, bodyguard or protector nanny droid he'd be at that point. Yeah, but I mean, spoilers from the trailer is it looks like Grogu can take Doesn't care need of himself. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at this point. Because IG Eleven blew up at the end of the first season, and Grogu mm-hmm. hadn't trained with Luke at all, mm-hmm. so now he has training with Luke, so he could probably take care of himself. So, um, I feel like, yeah, but I guess he does. Why does he want? I don't know why he wants IG Eleven specifically. I know he says he trusts droid that him. He trusts. Yeah, it's a droid that he knows and he trusts. I guess he's still got that because those hangups. Because in the beginning, he's like, I'm going to go to Mandalore and bathe in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. And uh, he doesn't. Like, he doesn't. He's like, I'm going to stop at Navarro first. So it's clearly, like, important enough for that reason. Um, And he does take the body instead of just the memory. So, Mm. uh, yeah, I'm assuming he'll get. Yeah. But as Rick mentioned here, it is exactly that. It's the end of um, Terminator, the first Terminator movie with the... Uh, the Arnold T eight hundred like crawling through the um, the hydraulic press uh, like that is exactly and the protocol what... droid. Uh huh. Jin okay. Din was hitting the droid every time. It just wasn't damaging it. I mean, he was hitting I... it most. Did you see he it definitely once hit or did it. A you few watch it times. twice. I watched it twice. He hit it a few times. It okay. sounded like he shot off screen a few times, and there was some sounds of blaster when he didn't get hit. I mean, he's a better shot than that. We know that he could probably shoot the head if he could, but I guess maybe he doesn't want to fully destroy it again. Right, right. He, maybe he's trying to take out the limbs. Something, um, or just like paralyze it, or something, anything. Um, yeah. But it's then, yeah, then the the droid, droid. yeah, he uses his head. We get the the one liner. Um, it's fine. Um, uh, but yeah, it was just yeah, the, the Terminator the vibe of it was was really good. Like it looked, I feel like can... like that sort of stop motion creepiness. That's kind of what I kind of feel like I wish Mandalorian was more like James Bond with the one-liners. Like he's always, he's too cool. Like Mm. when all those guys are standing there in front of the school and he's just kind of leaning up against the thing, I'm like, man, I kind of want him to be a little more less stoic, I guess. Yeah. But I know I understand that he's letting Grief Cargo do his thing, that he's just kicking back and watching. And I know that like Mando's not gonna let anything happen to Grief Cargo, but it's just like the standing there and stuff, like the the, line. the lean on the tree. Yeah, it's 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 too cool. 
Mm. It's too cool. Know. Um, <clears throat> but I do, I did like the one liner and I'm like, oh, I kind of like more of that. Yeah. Like, like not every line has to be so, um, serious. The uh-huh. show doesn't need to be it's so serious. Like when he's with Grogu, he, he never like you never see him get the play. No, he's he started out? to let he started to let his guard down a bit in terms of like teaching him and being a dad. But he's not he's not a playful, fun dad. He's he's loving, he's caring, he's like serious. He's he's teaching even with him. Greek Cargo when they're alone in the office. He, I just wanted to kick up his legs and just be like, "Hey, how's it going, old friend?" Like I want, I don't know. He's so. He's so stoic. He feels robotic. And I'm just like, loosen up. You're a dad now. I know you, you've you got a lot of stuff on your shoulders, but at the same time, I like... Hope, I hope that that is his arc this season, is like loosening up and realizing that the way is the the wrong way. Um, and then we can get <laughs> sublime in this and they can like be playing wrong way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you think we're going to get... Do you think they're setting up a shirtless Pedro Pascal... Going oh, into the water. Oh, we're going fully shirtless and just not helmetless, we're getting chestless as well. Like um yeah. yeah, interesting. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's why he needs a droid, because he's like, My kid doesn't need to see this. We just get like <laughs> him and his Mando Speedo. Um I did I did like that he was sleeping in the N1 during the hyperspace and uh Pergil. Yeah. So yeah, so I guess that this is because uh, Grogu is so sort of force sensitive and he's in tune with that sort of stuff. Like he sees a Pergil. We see like from uh, Star Wars Rebels, Rebel. for those who didn't watch it, they are the the originators, like rumor has it of, of hyperspace. They are space whales and they are what um, Ezra and Thrawn are taken by. At the end of that show, um, mm taken hyperspace blind jump into the unknown we never see them or know where they've gone until we're going to and this so, just this just 100 percent confirmed to me that we are gonna see pergil for real yeah. in in ahsoka or whatever like maybe even in skeleton crew um yeah but this is a like, good way had, this is a good way mentioned. to sort of introduce them into live action without they, they were mentioned in crazy Obi-Wan. They were, like yeah. uh, Bail Organa mentions that he like when he was a kid he just wanted to like go and uh, be a pergo watcher or whatever basically a whale watcher um, or something like yeah. that. Um, it's good just to have them be like a silhouette, kind of get people wondering, asking if, if these you questions. Watch Rebels, like what are those? I want to know what exactly. those are. Steve, Stevie's and doing it right here. It's, it's it asks that question and then people will yeah. go and check it out. And it's it's cool for that reason. It's a really good way of teasing in we don't need to ever see them again in this show um Mm -hmm. and but then come ahsoka or whatever later on they're kind of gonna have to they're kind of gonna have to show them or like when they explain them whether we see them in the show main or when we meet up with ezra and he explains to sabine what happened and like we get a flashback maybe or whatever um that's how you do it and you can show them and people aren't so confused going why the fuck are these whales flying through hyperspace like Right. That's what they do. They they are the original hyperspace creators. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought that was really cool. I thought that was really nice. Um, and it was it was just a cool cool little thing, but not in a cool cool guy way. It was it was a nice nod. Yeah. Um, it wasn't <laughs> another nice nod? I thought was at the end of the the pirate battle, um, the space battle, which I thought was a really good space battle. Um, love love an asteroid chase space battle like a lot of um, Empire Strikes Back or Attack of the Clones sort of in there like taking bits from both of them I thought um, the ship the the pirate captain whose name I did have uh, Gary uh, Gorian Shard good pirate name Sig- Sigmund um, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters did you ever watch I, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters it no, reminded me of that he definitely had like Swamp Thing Sea monster sort of vibe to him but Not I liked it I, kinda, I, I liked it yeah I thought I mean, it was really good I thought it was really cool like I was wondering what what species they're gonna pull because they like to reference old species that they've seen and stuff but it looks like they've maybe created something new here I'm all for it um yeah. that ship though is so in the Dark Empire comics, the the old um, Dark Horse comic, like from way back in like ninety one, uh, the Emperor came back somehow, and it was a he was a clone. Um, 
And he had a, this another new type of super superstar destroyer. It was the Eclipse class superstar destroyer. Mm -hmm. Massive. It was black. And it had that that nose piece, like that, that sort of dip down. Okay. This was essentially that, but on a smaller scale because it's it's just a pirate captain. Uh, but the design mm. was it was exactly based on that. Um, I've seen a few people sort of tweeting pictures from Dark Empire and things like that. It's nice uh, to have the two things that I like about this episode that we had issues with the first two seasons was um, it's always been focused. There's never really a focus. Um, they kind of it's episodic and it kind of yeah. goes around. This one I like that um there's a focus there's an end goal we're heading towards man yeah, yeah assuming assuming that's gonna be the finale of this season or maybe not i don't know it's it's the goal um, at the moment like it's yeah and we get a we get a clear-cut villain i know moth moth Gideon was the the um the villain in the second season, but he wasn't even brought up till like the last two episodes of the first season and the first season didn't have a main villain. So I don't know if this pirate will be the main villain, but I do like that. It felt that way. I, it definitely for Navarro. Like I th I'm sure that we'll be going back to Navarro at some point. Um, and I'm mm. sure that it's going to be under attack and that he's going to be wanting retribution and things like that. They've set enough of those things up, whether that's, after the redemption whether that's the like the return maybe it's somewhere mid-season maybe it's a distraction from the goal something is going to happen and i don't i mean i i'm still saying that the armor is the main villain um but i think that he is like the the telegraphed villain with the armor being the one who's actually behind the scenes like so, really bad not not so, behind the scenes pulling strings but like behind the scenes like yeah. actually is going to be the bad guy I'm not clear on this because we got he got the dark saber from the armorer in Book of mm. Boba Fett. No, he beat he beat Moff Gideon and took it from Moff Gideon. That's right. Oh, but and he then, did have the he did have the black the dark the saber dark, in in Book of Boba Fett. He he had it and he yeah, showed yeah. it to her and he's so, training. So how come they're not bowing down to him? Because he's not a Mandalorian anymore. In their okay. eyes, I guess. Right. In their covered eyes. Yeah, and also that's I, I another reason why. Like, do you they see? Should have as soon as he presented the dark saber to them in Book of Boba Fett, they should have like uh, by their creed, whatever. Like, it seems like they should have bent the knee and just be like, "All right, you're our leader now. You're our Mandalore." I have a. Um, but it's it's all horseshit. Like their their way is so. I have a. Even the look, the look that she gave to, like she looked down at Grogu and then looked back up at him. And then she delivered the, this is the way, but it was the way that she did it. It was almost snarky in my mind. Like it was like, a, well, yeah, this is the way. Let's see if you can fucking do it. And then when you come back, I'll think of like, I have another excuse why you can't be with us. I have another prediction. I think that he's going to bust her helmet wide open with that dark saber. Ooh, not her own helmet. And that's going to sting more than any sort of other wound is her helmet's coming off. She's going to reveal. Like, Better have like a mustache and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they got to be all hairy. I don't know why they're all not like beards coming out of the bottom of the helmets and stuff. They they clearly like they'll they'll take it off. They'll have a meal. They'll have a shave. They'll put it back on. Um, all right. I mean, they're gonna have mad dandruff. It's gonna be just gross hair. But gross. Yeah, um, wash those things out. Right? Ugh, I mean, yeah, it's gonna stink in there as well, it doesn't it? Smell so bad. Um, it smell yeah. like hockey gear. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All of it. The whole, the whole armor set is just gonna reek. Maybe that's what the noise is. Maybe it's got like a, it's cleaning, like a, a decompression, like <laughs> maybe <laughs> sucking out all the gross. Yeah. Um. So when yeah, I mentioned that when he leaves the armorer, she sort of has that sort of snarky, this is the way, uh, to him. When he leaves Bo Katan at the end, she's like a goodbye, Dinjar, and and she has a bit of snark to it. And it's like his two mums, essentially, like from both sides of the divorced family, like are both a bit pissy with him at the moment. And it's like, all right, and he's he's lost kind of he doesn't really know what to do or where to go or who to turn to he's he's he thought he it's had funny because he's too he he had support and now he's got nothing it, 
it's funny because he's too serious for Bo Katan. He's not serious enough for the armor, yet he has the 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 dark saber, which yeah. is like huge Pissed to both, both of them. Off. And it and it's like the most off that like, he's the one with it. He is the fuck up it. kid. He's the fuck up kid who like he doesn't deserve yeah. to have this thing, but he's got it. He yeah. doesn't know what to do with it. Um and and we can't do anything about it. I felt really bad for Bo Katan. She she seemed to when we met her in season two she she had her shit together like yes okay they're on the back foot but she is she is moving forward she's got a plan she's stealing some ships from the empire she's gonna go and take back Mandalore she's got some forces behind her she's got a pro wrestler with her um, she's <laughs> she's she's doing fine and she's getting yeah. there she can she's sassing back to Boba Fett she's sassing back to Din like she's confident she's got that confidence with her and then. At the end of Book of Bo- uh, end of Mando season two, like Din has this thing, and she's like, "Oh man, that was that was the thing that I needed, and now I can't do anything about it." And since then, it's all just crumbled around, and she's just got uh, this really nice right. house on a rainy cliff, and she's just bummed. Like I'm surprised she didn't have a bottle in her hand. Like she looks like she's just been drinking herself yeah. like into a stupor. Um. Uh, s- so when the when the episode ended, mm-hmm. Stevie said, "Well, that was underwhelming," and I felt the same way. Um, right now in the chat, she says, "This conversation is making me like that episode more." Yeah, I'm in the same I'm in the same boat. Good, good. <laughs> Live action like- Star Wars making me feel better about a show that I thought was, uh, was all right. And and to be honest, like I. I wasn't like, oh my god, that's the best thing ever about it. I thought, yeah, yeah it's fine, it's fun. Um, Liz, she texts me and she's like, I hope Mando's good. And I was like, yep, it it was fun. It was exactly an episode of Mandalorian. Yeah. And that is how I thought about it. Like, it's, it's nothing more, nothing less. It is an episode of Mandalorian. We've seen two seasons of it now. Mm-hmm. We know what to expect. Mm-hmm. But I find it whenever we talk about Mandalorian, I found it when we were talking about Book of Boba Fett 2, which was an, the season of the Mandalorian still, if you ask me. Um, yeah. It's it's better when you can talk about it, when you can have, like, you can go over these bits and bobs. Everyone's mentioning yeah. the stuff that they liked. I, it does improve the experience. Is it like denial? Me. Is it like trying to, like, gild the lily? Is it, is it, I don't know if it is. Because I am, like, like, I didn't think about where he fits in the grand scheme of Mandalore. And how he no. is this, this fuck up. And both sides... The, 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 there are two sides of the coins, and I like that. I like that I, 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 I lean towards the side of Bo Katan. <laughs> I do too. Um, yeah. Jeremy Kelly had a really good analogy here. He's a young Arthur who's pulled the sword from the stone. That's, that's yeah. really good. Um, yeah, he doesn't really know what to do with it. He probably doesn't deserve it at the, this point, but it's, it's come to him. Um, it's yeah. again Lord of the Rings. It's the um, I wish the ring had never come to me. Uh, so do all who suffer. I don't know the quote, but yeah, Is basically, able to... yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that. It's that whole like it's it's come to you whether you like it or not. It's on you now. Is is the is the dark saber gonna be like uh, like He Man, where you put the sword in Castle Grayskull and unlo- unlocks the door? Who? Like oh, I kind of. Because the dark saber, the dark saber for me, I, I've I've watched all the Clone Wars episodes and Rebels and stuff. To me, it's like they really put a lot of importance into it, but I don't know if they really say why. I know it's just like this unique thing. It was, yeah. But it was. I would was... like to see it do something important to Mandalore. Like it's a secret tucked away that he unlocks, and it becomes a bigger thing. Um, yeah, I I, I don't right know. Now like, it's just we, like oh, it's know... just a cool sword. Yeah, all we know, uh, I think it's in the uh, Rebels episodes where it's like, it was it was created by the first and potentially only Mandalorian Jedi um, here, and it then could it had it held such respect that it could unite all the houses, and it was always Clan yeah. Vizsla. It was always like the the Favreau family, essentially, uh, like who were in control of it. Until they weren't, until Maul and then Bo Katan and then Sabine, or Sabine, then Bo Katan and then Moff Gideon. But it's now, it's like it should 
be uniting all of them. And I feel like as um, Bo-Katan said, it's like, if you went and waved it around in front of the people who were my forces, it would unite them. Like in front of those houses who are like that, that sort of side of Mandalorians, it would unite them. They would follow you. You don't deserve to be followed, but they would follow you (laughs) because it's a symbol. Um, Whereas the, maybe the, the death watch side of things, the, the children of the watch, they might not, and based on the armorer, I don't know if they would. Maybe they would just keep on trying to kill him. Why Why would you need to build, like, a group of Mandalorian? You know? Like, like we saw the after the baptism, a group of Mandalorian who are hanging out together, and then they're just, like, fighting an a alligator. Yeah, crocodile. But what's the goal here? I feel like... In this moment of time, what needs to happen is to make is to rebuild Mandalore. Yeah, and they with, don't. I mean, they abandoned with it the Empire the fallen. Yeah, yeah, but with with the Empire fallen, and Palpatine hasn't reared his head yet. Snoke hasn't appeared yet. Mm. The First Order hasn't appeared yet. Um, right now, it's this New Republic and, and Imperial Remnant. And, we know that there's some Imperial Remnant out there, sort of thing. Right, and you have. Uh, your friend is Luke Skywalker who has pretty much sway with the New Republic. I'm assuming that Leia is still involved with the New Republic. I think um, at this point in time she is because it's not been revealed that Vader was her dad yet. That comes later in Bloodline. So so like I feel like the, the, the key of this show or the sort of main goal of the show after seeing what Navarro has gone through to be able to like rebuild this place or build this place up from nothing Mm -hmm. um, is to do the same with Mandalore. Like Din could be the guy who says, I'm going to wave this around, come follow me, but I need this clan and this clan and everybody come to Mandalore. The waters aren't poisoned or we can, we can take care of the poison water. Um, and then, like, just start from scratch. He knows like, some miners on Navarro and, who might want to expand. He knows, yeah. And he would side. He would side with the New Republic, and like, we're rebuilding Mandalore not as opposition, but to build an independent, our culture, an independent, yeah. but also like law-abiding independent, basically. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we would be an ally, and I feel like that would be a great sort of ending to this whole thing and i know john favreau said there is no end goal they don't have a end goal. well he "Mm." also said that like when they were announcing ahsoka and rangers and like all the other stuff that is like that that is all building like the they're calling it the mando sort of side of it because mando was the first show but like that side of it might all come together into like an event sort of thing so if that all comes together whether it's thrawn whether it's I don't know, the Yuzhan Vong, like, or whatever, like, whatever they want to do, like, if it all comes together, then having Mandalorian, Navarro, having all of these different bits, like, building up as this outer... I mean, I said it, I think, at the end of uh, season two, where this feels like the Thrawn trilogy. They're substituting Talon card for yeah. Boba Fett. So he's, like, the, the bounty hunter outlaw, like, who's got his crime family over there. You've got the 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 Mandalorian side of things, which they all can come in. You've got the Jedi. You've got the the old clones. All of that stuff. That I think they are sort of subtly doing the Thrawn trilogy as a backbone. It feels like and the would, time frame works. Would, I'm kind of hoping that Thrawn is the sort of creator of the First Order. That'd be amazing, or at least a. A, a a next step towards the first order or something. Uh, I like a Thrawn with a young Hux. Oh, I mean the Armitage uh, Hux is yeah Hux, but his dad was Empire. So if his dad is working at this point for Thrawn, then great. Uh, Using clones, I, I'm afraid. I'm so afraid that the Mando series is so thin. That I don't know if we can get to how soon we could get to that point. Like if it was like if it was like Andor, like where they're just like really plot heavy, showing how the inner working of this stuff works, uh, that would be cool. But fingers um, crossed. Yeah, you gotta get We've, going. We, uh, yeah, I just looked at the time. We, I could keep going yeah. for a long time. Uh, next yeah. week we are gonna have Adam Fraser with us. Uh, we uh, should have Ralph with us the whole time. The reason we've got Adam is because 
we might not have had Ralph for the beginning of the show, but it should be. Well, sure. It should be. Yeah. As, yeah. As, it, as it stands, we should have all three. Um, I'll definitely be here. Adam will definitely be here. Normal and time. I just want to. I just want to let folks know that yeah, next week I am going to be out of town. I am working on a project that I've been working on for about a year and a half, almost two years now. Uh, that project has been a secret, and we've been teasing it. That Wednesday is the day we're announcing what that project is. Yeah, and I'll do it. I'll do it on live action Star Wars. So yeah. so come by next week. Uh, I won't. I'll be. I'll be doing this from a uh, probably an iPad. An undisclosed uh, location uh, or maybe my my uh (laughs) maybe a lab i don't know i don't know how it's gonna come to you we'll figure out for my phone whatever i don't know if i'm gonna sound like shit but next week adam frazier is gonna join us i think he's gonna be excited about the announcement as well um and then uh about the show like he loves mandalorian so it'd be great to have him on um yeah but yes thank you for joining us everyone um keep keep tweeting keep doing all that share find us follow us yeah. um love it it's, i'm glad to be back talking about show every week yeah me too it's good it's good um but until then don't give in to hate celebrate the love punch it